Hey there everyone, this is Michael Dougal. I review cognitive supplements and today we're going to talk about some of my favorite supplements for better handling social anxiety, which is especially going to be important for productivity, for boosting levels of confidence. I'm actually in a sales position. So all I do is talk to people every day and I really feel these supplements have helped me to excel in my career as a real estate agent because social anxiety is the last thing you'd want to have. You have to be interactive with people. You have to be building relationships. You can never have a second thought about calling anybody. And these supplements would really be different for different individuals because anxiety is it's very vague. There's different types of anxiety, but social anxiety specifically that we're referring to is the anxiety you would feel before approaching somebody. Maybe you feel awkward in social settings. And so the use of these supplements should better help you feel a bit more comfortable. So we're going to go over four supplements specifically, their benefits, their side effects, how to take them, and should they be combined with other supplements or should they not be? And the very first supplement that probably has made the biggest difference for me over the years has been aniracetam. So aniracetam is part of the racetam family. I've been using this supplement for over eight years at this point on and off and I do feel like it's probably the only supplement out there specifically like designed with that benefit of helping individuals with their social anxiety or that's the benefit I notice most out of it from the other rest times in my experience the other ones can help me with energy levels can help me with motivation help me with word recall but once I stop taking on a rest time I definitely feel it's a bit more challenging to talk to people see some supplements you take them for an extended period of time and believe me it actually makes a difference you feel like it's a lot easier to approach people and I definitely notice that benefit with anorostam. Uh, one of the reasons why people don't take anorostam is they just pretty much give up on it too early. And it's a supplement that needs to be consumed in a consistent fashion and needs to be taken for probably about a week, some individuals probably two weeks before they notice the intended benefit. So the way individuals could use anorostam is taking a serving size of 500 milligrams to 800 milligrams twice a day. And this is the key tip is that it should be consumed along with a form of choline. So choline is a really important nutrient for overall brain health. It's actually found in egg yolk. Although most individuals aren't getting adequate choline intake and choline goes well with pretty much all supplements out there related to cognitive health but specifically with the racetam so the way that you would use a form of choline along with your uh, anorastam supplementation is by using something like alpha gpc at 100 to 200 milligrams twice a day along with your anorastam serving and there's a lot of discussion around, should you be taking the Rastams and Anorastam in a fasted state? Should you be taking it with a meal? Is it water soluble? Is it fat soluble? And it's been my experience that it really doesn't make too much of a difference. If you, for some reason, don't have Anorastam, then don't worry, there's actually a couple good alternatives to it. A Prastam being one of them, it feels pretty much like Anorastam. I think it's the closest Rastam to feeling like how Anorastam does. Anorastam is a bit better with anxiety, although Prastam boosts motivation. So sometimes when you're in such a motivated state, you don't really have time to think about the anxiety. The way individuals could use prostam is instead of taking the anorastam serving like i mentioned they would be taking one gram of prostam along with their alpha gpc intake and if you don't have prostam then you could consider using nupept although i don't feel nupept is all that similar though nupept has a good variety of benefits more of which i've talked about in this video over here and some of the side effects of using anorastam or prostam or nupept could be potentially having headaches feeling somewhat lightheaded or feeling like you're in a worse mood although the good news is that most of these side effects can actually be avoided if you are to use anorastam along with a choline supplement. The second supplement that you can consider using for better handling social anxiety is lion's mane mushroom, which I've been using over seven years at this point, mostly on. I take a bit of time off lion's mane, and that's another reason why I can tell exactly what's working with respect to social anxiety, because with anorastam as well as lion's mane, once I stop using them, I definitely feel those social anxiety levels heighten a bit. Uh, with anorastam, it helps in a different sort of way that lion's mane does. With lion's mane, you just feel calmer. You feel very unattached to the outcome. You also just have this interest in people. And when you're interested in people, then you don't really think about your social anxiety. You're just wanting to know about people and ask them questions and understanding that relationships are actually going to be beneficial for you in the short term and in the long term. And so with Anoras time, it's kind of like it helps with verbal fluency. It helps you to be in a better mood when you're talking to people. Whereas with Lion's Mane, it just gives life a whole lot more color. And that's why it's such a powerful supplement. Lion's Mane has probably been one of the most popular supplements over the past year because of its very interesting benefits and unique benefits and that you just feel smarter. You're like suddenly curious about people, situations, uh, different things that you can learn. And it makes for an overall experience that is pretty hard to describe. It's very different than other supplements. Though I'm somebody who's really sensitive to lion's mane as well as anorastam. Not every individual is like me. And most supplements out there are going to be somewhat subtle. One of the reasons, however, why lion's mane supplement use is somewhat controversial is because first, there's not a lot of research just backing how effective the supplement is. Yes, we know theoretically it can help. Yes, we have a lot of anecdotes of people sharing their experience being in a better mood, although we are yet to have really solid research showing what sort of cognitive improvements it can have. 
The other reason why individuals may not enjoy lion's mane mushroom supplementation is because of the associated side effects. And the most common side effect along with lion's mane use would be demotivation. You feel somewhat satisfied, like complacent, like everything's okay. Why push further? <laughs> and for that reason, you may want to consider using lion's mane along with another supplement that can increase dopamine levels. Then you don't really have to worry about demotivation because increasing your dopamine levels is going to lead to you being more productive and wanting to take action. And I've talked more about supplements that may increase dopamine dopamine levels in this video over here. There's a lot of different ways you can actually ingest your lion's mane. Some people eat it. Although most individuals like myself would use a supplement form, uh, you can consider the eight to one dual extract. You can consider the one to one extract. Most of the forms of lion's mane are pretty effective, but the most effective form for me has been the eight to one dual extract you can find from Nootropics Depot. And that I noticed the cognitive benefits as soon as I take it. I always had good experiences with other forms of lion's mane. This specific form after I ingest it, I'm definitely in a better mood. I'm definitely calmer. And that feeling is associated with like just feeling centered, being okay with talking to people, being unattached, being uh, forgiving of like myself and some of the faults that I have and understanding like I'm just a unique person that has things to offer. So why not talk to people? And it's interesting because one of the indications that I knew Lion's Mane was doing something was because I found myself being social in settings that I typically wasn't being social in. <laughs> so the way I'm currently using the 8 to 1 dual extract Lion's Mane mushroom is taking uh, 500 milligrams twice a day. There are some times when I would take about 300 milligrams three times a day, but I think you get the point, just making sure I get about one gram a day. But the way you would want to start using the supplement is if you were to get it, uh, it's most commonly going to be in a serving size of 300 to 500 milligrams. You can ingest it once a day, make sure that you feel okay. And if you are feeling okay and enjoying the benefits, then you can gradually increase to two servings a day. It doesn't matter whether you take it in a fasted state or in a fed state. This is a pretty versatile supplement. It also doesn't matter if you take it before bed as it's not necessarily stimulating. And I've tried many other mushroom supplements like a cordyceps, maitake, shiitake, and I've definitely noticed the best results using lion's mane. And the third supplement you can consider, it's actually two supplements. So number three and number four would be using caffeine and L-theanine. And so this is a very popular supplement because when you combine these two compounds together, you feel the energetic benefits that you would get from caffeine and you feel the calming benefits from L-theanine at the same time. And so caffeine, we all know to be uh, one of the best stimulating supplements out there that boosts our energy, boosts our motivation, boosts our levels of focus. However, caffeine also comes with the downsides associated with them, such as the jitters, such as the brain fog, such as the energy crashes. And so the reason individuals may consider using L-theanine along with their caffeine is because L-theanine helps to calm you down and actually helps to minimize some of those caffeine side effects. And there's plenty of research that's backing the effectiveness of L-theanine on cognition, on memory, but most importantly, on levels of anxiety. It's up there with the uh, ashwagandha. What I dislike about ashwagandha is that it just makes you very fatigue, makes you lethargic, makes you very complacent, whereas L-theanine doesn't seem to have some of those negative side effects and hits you a lot faster. So that's the reason why I would personally uh, enjoy using L-theanine along with my caffeine. And how you're typically going to find it is marketed in a ratio of taking one caffeine to two L-theanine. So 100 milligrams of caffeine along with 200 milligrams of L-theanine, that seems to do the trick. This hits you pretty fast so you can ingest the supplement and notice the benefit over the next two to three hours. So this comes in very handy, let's say, if you're going to a networking event, maybe you have to talk to people, maybe you need the energy boost, you need that um, improvement with respect to social anxiety. This is a great tool you can have in your arsenal because it's different than lion's mane, it's different than anorastam. Those two supplements you have to take for some time in most cases for you to notice them working. Whereas this is a supplement, it's not like you need to take it every day. You could take it when you need to. And the side effects associated with caffeine and L-theanine would be a bit of inconsistency in the sense of, I don't always feel the same when I use L-theanine. And the same thing to be said about caffeine in that sometimes I ingest it, I feel great. I feel very productive. I feel like the a come down isn't that bad. Whereas sometimes I'll use this supplement, I'll use caffeine, I'll use L-theanine together, and I won't have a good experience. I'll feel demotivated. I'll feel like something's off. Or the worst thing, sometimes I notice my anxiety levels increase even more. But it's especially important with these three supplements to really look at, okay, are you an anxious person in the first place? Do stimulants get you more anxious or less anxious because we all seem to respond to them differently. I'm somebody that when I ingest stimulants, I notice my anxiety levels drop, but a lot of individuals actually notice the reverse happening. And so if you're one of those individuals, you may want to stay clear of caffeine and L-theanine or just consider using the L-theanine. And the way you could consider doing that is having a serving size of L-theanine at 200 milligrams once to two times a day. And if you were to ask if it's okay to combine these supplements together, I think so. I actually do myself. <laughs> um, not that I recommend you do it. Of course, if you're going to use supplements, supplements, do it under the guidance of your general practitioner. Let me know what you think about these few supplements in the comment section below. Do subscribe, drop a 
a like if you found the video informative. I thank you so much for your support, and I look forward to seeing you next time.